In this video, we're going to talk about another, um, what we call a medium scale um, chip or, or a integrated circuit that is pretty useful. It's, been, uh, it's uh, more complex than a simple gate, but not as complex as the microprocessor and bigger, bigger devices. Um, there is a group of them that I would kind of collectively refer to as encoder, multiplexers, and MUX. They're slightly different from each other, but nonetheless, they're, they're closely related. Let's go ahead and get started with the first one, which is the encoder. So as the name implies, they encode. They usually, let's say <clears throat> you have n number of lines coming in, and, and typically they show them this way, you have n number of lines coming in and, and uh, your objective is uh, usually a power of two. Let's say uh, you will have inputs coming in uh, from I0 to I7 in this case. And then they would, have to, in this case, we have eight inputs to the power of three. So we only need about three binary values, let's say O, output 0, output 1, output 2 to be generic. And what happens is that they could be active high and active low. That's a fancy way of saying we, they're either going to recognize one of these being low or one of them being high. The one we're going to look at, the 74 LS148, is called active low. So it recognizes which of these pins are low. And if there are multiple of them are low, it recognizes the lowest number one first. And then here it tells you the binary value that comes in here. Um, it'll tell you which one of these eight lines uh, are low. For example, if you had zero, one, one, that means a six. That means that this is the line that is low. So this is referred to as a as an encoder, this style. And again, as we said, 74LS148 is an example of that. Let's go in and take a look at the actual data sheet for this part so we can dig into it and uh, see what, um, what it's made of. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet. Here is the 148. Like everything else we've looked at, the data sheet is overloaded. You got many, many different parts covered by just this one data sheet. And as you can see, uh, the parts come in both surface mount packages as well as the DIP packages. And most of the school labs, we will use uh, this, this particular uh, uh, DIP packages, the 74LS148 package, that's the one we are using. And let's, let's go ahead and take a look at kind of uh, how it's made up. And <clears throat> this is, this is uh, the one to the right, right here is the one we're gonna be using. As you notice, this one is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got eight input coming in here. And then you've got one, two, three output coming out of it. And this little triangle shapes, that's a, similar to when they put circle on it, indicating the active low means when it's low, it's a specifying information. And many, gate, many of these gates will have other control input, for example, in this one, we're gonna have E enable bit. If it's not enabled, it would not do the translation. And then in this particular case, we even got a couple of extra controls over here, okay? And then if you if you wanted to see how it's made out of, it's relatively simple. We can, we can use our uh, ability to analyze this thing using true table. You can put a true table relating A out to the inputs and the control scheme and figure out what's going on, okay? I would, we, won't, we won't spend a lot of time going through the logic of it, but let's go back and take a look at, if I'm looking at something like this, not only I need to know the packaging of what packaging I'm using, I also have to figure out kind of how the logic of it works. And here's a table for 148. As you can see, it says in order for it to operate, the control enable or have must be low. So the low active, so when you make it low, this encoder starts to operate and do the translation. What, how does it translate? Well, if all the inputs are high, it's gonna give you high all across the board, meaning that it's not seeing anything. Notice that is also the same. Uh, uh, oh, the other thing we need to, we need to really uh, focus on here is that there are two other controls that here that we need to pay attention to as well. 
Okay. Uh, those are all which you can leave them open, but you can also look at them to uh, make sure that you are counting. If uh, not counting, but you're doing the encoding if it's low and high. Let's go ahead back here and take a look at what happens. So when bit seven, that's one one one, is low. It, the way it indicated this is active low, it says zero zero zero. So it's a complement of the actual location. If you, for example, look down here is that's going to be low, high, high, which means it's really line four, it's on, it's right here. So if you count uh, from here is one, two, three, four. So that's how, or that's actually it's from here, zero, one, two, three, four, that happened to work out, it would be seven, six, five, four. So line four would be, would have been one, zero, zero, but this is, since it's active low, it's inverted. So this is an encoder. Uh, the, the, this is the one we are looking at. It's called 8 to 3 encoding. So you put in 8 lines and the binary that comes out, it says which of the lines are low. So, and, and in one of, uh, so this is very useful. The other style, let's go back and take a look at another related to this. So this was an encoder. Another way we can get many, many lines brought into one is it's, you can think about it pretty much as a switch. And we're referring to this as, as a short as MUX, which really stands for multiplexer. But for shorts, a lot of time people call it MUX. So uh, a MUX, basically, you, we, can, we can do the same thing as MUX. Let's say you, you want to do a MUX, and you've got eight input coming in here. And let's say it's input 0 through input 7. There are seven of, eight of these things in the middle. Then these guys will have uh, basically a control block. Since we have eight bits, we're gonna have three bits of control coming in here, usually referred to as select zero, select one, and select two. And depending on what you put in here, one of these bits will get connected to an output that goes out there. For example, if I were to put, if it's active high, we'll take a look at the parts we have as an example of multiplexer and see what it is. But in this case, let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's a S0, S1, and S2 coming in. So if I were to put 0, 1, 0, that means I want to select 2. So what happens is that the I0, I1, I2 is right here. And since I put a 2 on the select, what it will do, it literally would connect this to the output. So you've got one output, and depending on what select bit you select, you're going to have one of those connectors. So you can think of this as a big switch, a single pole, eight throw, if you want to think about it that way, where the base of the switch is connected here, and based on what you put in the select, this tip gets connected to the appropriate place. So for this case, we've got whatever is in here flowing through. So this is called a box. An example of box, if you want to be, buy one and build with it, is 74 LS. 151. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what's that all about. So, so 151 again comes in various packages, surface mount package, uh, and a um, and a dip package. Um, so uh, the, let's let's uh, take a look at here. Here's a good little explanation of how it works. It's uh, this is exactly like the one example I put out there, which is we've got three select bits, 0, S0, S1, and S2. We've got it enabled, so you have to have a bit that is set low in order for it to start operate, switch to operate. Then you've got eight inputs coming in here, and then an output, and they give you even an inversion of the output as well. They give you the complement of the output and the direct output. So let's go take a look at a picture. That, oh, here's, here's a good picture of this. So, so depending on what you select on S0, S1, and S2, you get one of these bits, one of these I0 through I7 connected to this, to the Z. And the complement of Z will come out in the next pin. Okay, pretty straightforward. Um, here is a circuitry if you want to know what's inside those chips. You're both, you can spend some time looking at this thing. And even they give it, give it the expression. And here's the equation. Always remember to pay attention to the control. In this case, for this thing to operate properly, you have to set the control to low. And then if you select zero, uh, assuming uh, if you select zero and this one has got a low on this pin, then you're going to get high low. If it's the reverse, you get the reverse coming in. So fundamentally what it does, it basically connects whatever uh, bet you select directly 
to the output. In this case, they're calling their output Z in here. And that's called a multiplexer. And again, they're very useful, especially if you got many, many, many input coming in, but you don't have to look at all those inputs all the time, but you want to be able to switch amongst them. Um, lots of time we use them when we have, and you have to stretch a wire for a long distance, or if you have a chip that only has one in one input coming in, but we want to look at seven, eight different things over time. We don't have to look at them all at the same time. We'll use 